Hello, I'm Justin McGonigal. Welcome to Artist Spotlight. Today we're in Nashua at the Picker Building, which has a whole bunch of artist studios. Let's go check it out. Hi, I'm Sid Caesar, and I'm a photographer. Hello there. Hi, Sid. Welcome. Justin McGonigal. How nice are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Welcome to the Picker Building. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah. So are these, are these some of your photographs? Yeah, there? yeah. So this is my studio. Um, I'm sort of tucked away up on the fourth floor of the Picker Building, um, and I've been here since 2004. Uh, so I've been here for quite a little while. So um, what kind of photography do you do? I, see I do a, a little a, bit of both. A lot um, of portraits. Yeah, I'm a yeah. portrait photographer. Um, I specialize uh, in, I do a lot of stuff with bands and musicians for promotional and press kit and publicity and CD and album artwork. Um, oh, okay. And I also do a lot with headshots for corporate and business and actors and models and that sort of thing. And that's sort of oh. my two commercial niches. Okay. Um, and then I also do a lot of fine artwork. I have a gallery up in Concord um, and I, I do a lot with, um, I'm a big pop culture junkie so I do a lot of stuff with anime toys and I do portraits of them sort of like I do with real people. So if, I, if I'm oh. not photographing real people, I'm photographing things that look like real people. So I, I sort oh. of stick in that people genre of, of uh, so photography. You, you do portraits of toys? Yes. Can yeah. you describe that? Um, it more? started, um, I'm a big anime fan in Japanese. I'm a big, anime. Yeah, anime, okay. uh, cartoon characters, Japanese cartoon characters. Um, and it just started uh, while I was in college. I wanted to, um, I had a big vast collection of toys. And I thought, how can I, I take portrait photography with these, these smaller toys? And mm. I ended up sort of shooting them like traditional portraits, like a head and shoulder type of shot. Huh. Um, and then we blew them up really big, so the prints themselves were like 20 by 30 inches. So if you walked huh. into a room and you saw them, yeah. for a split second you, you might think that they're more traditional human, human like real people shots. Yeah. Um, and then once you see them, um, you're like, oh, that's kind of interesting. Huh. Um, and then the, the, and I did them originally, I did them in color, and then the work from there over the last few years has sort of trans, transformed into, um, I've been doing black and white portraits of them. Um, the toys that I've been getting are getting a little more risque as far as sculpture quality and clothing styles and stuff okay. like that. Um, so the stuff I've been doing now have been sort of these black and white gestural shots. Um, mm. It looks like we shoot them on film. They're very grainy. Huh. Um, they're backlit, so there's, there's kind of this very luminous quality that, huh. that sort of backlights them. Um, and they look really nice, but it's, it's still sort of this human portrait thing that I'm doing, um, which is huh. kind of cool. Is there something you're trying to say with, with the portrait? It's, um, I think it, it sounds the, very provocative. Really, it is yeah. the 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 recent stuff. Um, I had a show last year down in Boston to uh, sort of unveil this new black and white work that I'm doing, and I've been calling it Plastica Erotica. Plastica Pla Erotica. Plastic Erotica. Plastic Erotica. Um, and it's it's interesting. It's for me. It's it's sort of I'm photographing them in a way to sort of show the the. I don't know how you would explain it. Um, the ridiculousness of these toys, because these are these are essentially their toys. Mm -hmm. uh, collectors buy them. Um, they're very provocative, um, and I think it's kind of funny the way that these toys are sculpted in these provocative poses. Mm. And it's like, what well, you know, who who really are these geared at? You know, are who they, are they? What's the market? For? Where's the target yeah. market? Um, and the fact that they're sculpted so lifelike. Um, yeah. And so I, I like this sort of, and especially the black and white stuff, where I shot them, when you look at them, it, it tricks the eye more than it did when I was doing these color toy portraits. Huh. So these you really kind of have to look at. Yeah. Um, and then you start looking at like the proportions seem a little off. Huh. 
Yeah. You know, and then you're like, well, how, how is it possible that a real person is kind of shaped like this? Right. I was like, well, they're not really. They're, they're just these little tiny plastic fabricated things. Yeah. Um, so that's been kind of fun. It's, it's sort yeah. of just... That's an interesting idea. There's a lot of people that read a little bit more into it. Um, yeah. But I sort of do it for that this. That wasn't this. necessarily intended. Right, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of people are like, well, what's, what's up with him? You know, taking yeah. pictures of naked toys and stuff. And it's not really, it's not the creepy thing. Right, it's not, okay. Um, it's, it's more of this sort of social awareness thing if it's, you know, and, and a lot of people read into it and say, well, you know, if, if they make toys that look like that, you know, what is it talking about as far as, as females, as identity and role models? and The you whole know, Barbie. The, exactly, exactly. Yeah. And it's... it's Thanks. It's just this whole weird subculture, subculture that's going on. Huh. This is an example of, of my plastic erotica stuff. Oh. Um, so this, this is a, you know, it, it shows you. Um, oh, that is Yeah, odd. when you look at it really quickly, it, yeah. you can't quite tell. You know, you can, no. you can make out that the form is human. Um, but then it doesn't look. But then it doesn't yeah. look like it's a toy. That's odd. Um, so I, I kind of like, <laughs> I like that. that in, a, in an interesting way, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So I like, I like that, the huh. idea of fooling the eye. Yeah. Um, you know, and just what the what the viewer brings into the image themselves. Um, At first, I thought it was the top of a, a cello. You all know, right. The top of a cello. Yeah, goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. From a <laughs> from a distance. Yeah. Huh. Um, is she wearing boots. She's got sneakers on. She's like sneakers, sneakers and socks on. And a like um, a bikini. Or and something? a bikini. Yeah, but it's it's wow. just it's fascinating. Just you know the the yeah. gestures that these toys take on. Um, you know, they look real, and, yeah. and some of them, you know, like some, some yeah, look like... Yeah, it's amazing, the, uh, the contour. Yeah, I mean, yeah, isn't it? But then the, the legs, like the thighs look too long, because <laughs> it is a doll, right? right? So it's not So really... everything is sort of, like, perf perfectualized. Yeah, you know? like elongated. So and... when you look at it, um, and there's, there's other yeah. ones where it's, you know, it's, it's more like a frontal shot, and you, you look at them, and you're like, there's... No possible way that a human being can be, without can, the aid of plastic can surgery, built, can look like, like that. that. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of neat. In the, that's, the, a, that's an interesting idea. Yeah, yeah. And the prints, the prints themselves, um, they're much larger than this one. So when you when you walk into a room and there's a bunch of them, the, you know, it's it's like okay, so this is just another collection of nude photographs or something. Yeah. But then when you start getting into it, you're like, well, yeah. why this doesn't look? And then you find yeah. out that they're just little toys, and yeah. then it just brings this whole new perspective yeah, onto it. It really does. Yeah. Now, um, I notice some of these people, Dan Aykroyd, mm -hmm. did you he, yeah, he, meet um, Mr. Aykroyd and he was That was sort them? of an event. Um, I, I, when I first got out of college, I worked for a wine company, uh, and they called and told me that he was going to be in town promoting a wine. Okay. Um, and so for me, the most important thing out of doing the whole day, it was sort of a shadowing thing where I followed, and he, you know, he would do uh, autographs and signatures, and he would promote the wine, and we would document him in all the different areas. But I wanted to get one nice shot of just him mm. um, that we could use. And so I sort of snuck that at the last minute. I was able to kind of get him by himself. Mm. Uh, and that came out pretty good. Now, who are these other folks? Uh, a lot of them are, are local people. This is um, Michael Buckley, uh, who owns Michael's Timothy's Restaurant and Surf Restaurant ah, and Buckley Steaks. Okay. Yeah. Um, this is Perry Spearman of uh, Town Planner, uh, okay. Community Calendar. Um, and then we've got some local business. This is uh, Rebecca Jeffries. She's a flutist from the area. Okay. Um, and then some, some local uh, business CEOs and stuff for some large uh, computer firms. Huh. They're beautifully photographed. Yeah, I like, yeah. I like to keep everything very simple. Yeah, um, I like that about them. Um, one of the things I, I, I shoot primarily digitally now, although I still sort of play around with film quite a bit. Oh, you do? Okay. Um, but I, I like to sort of shoot people as if I was shooting film still. Um, and so I, I don't use a lot of busy backgrounds and uh, I try to keep the, the lighting nice and simple and sharp so that the subject pops right out from the yeah. background. And, yeah. Now I noticed what's similar about these two is there's less space here than there is in the back of them. Mm -hmm. So it looks like they're going out. Yeah. Was that intentional? That is, uh, for some reason, um, <laughs> I, when I shoot... Um, uh, for some reason, especially with my headshots, I shoot in a horizontal format. Okay. Um, so what happens is I end up sort of cropping the top of the heads off of okay. people. Uh, and I have a lot of people that say, well, you know, what, what, I, where's the top of my head? And yeah. it's like, well, we know your head's there. Like, people aren't going to walk in and be surprised right. that it, suddenly it's like, oh, my God, you have the top of right, my head. Right, I don't find anything um, overwhelming. About yeah. It, yeah, and so for me, I, ju I just, it's sort of a natural 
compositional thing I just yeah. go into. Um, and I like this sort of use it's, of it's negative space. Yeah. 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 Um, and I do a lot of that too, compositionally wise, when I work with musicians and stuff, I have a tendency to try to put them to one side. Huh. Um, just I think it's, it's more pleasing for the eye. It's just a basic compositional Yeah, there's something about it rule. which is striking. Yeah, yeah. Now these uh, photographs over here, these are musicians? Yep, this is, is some yeah. of the local musician stuff that I do. Um, usually we, we do some stuff inside. Um, but musicians really like to work outside. Um, so I give them this sort of this really nice, um, I almost call it a magazine sort of look. Um, okay. It's a very striking sort of magazine quality uh, image. This, all, this looks like the same place. Uh, no, different, different parts. Different parts, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Um, it's pretty. Yeah. Now, let's take these two folks, for example. Mm -hmm. Did they have something in mind that kind of that they wanted to... Um, infer from the photograph or was it just sometimes they do and sometimes they don't yeah. um, sometimes they come to me with with certain ideas or certain feelings that they want as okay. part of their work yeah uh, and sometimes they just respond to you know they've seen work on the website and they come to me and they just say I really like what I've seen what could you do with what us can... in this situation okay. um, and so so sometimes it's hard like there's a lot of preconceived ideas with especially bands and musicians like I have a lot of people that come to me and the first thing that they want to do is they want a, a shot of them walking down a railroad track oh, looking right. back over their shoulder yeah. carrying their guitar case and that's that's right. like the most stereotypical right. shot the ever. Bruce Springsteen. Exactly you know John like Mellon or people Camp, come in you know, and, and yeah. say well I want you to make me look like Dwight Yoakam from this picture. Yeah. And it's like well Dwight like, Yoakam already looks like Dwight Yoakam yeah. and that picture's already been done but we can sort of <laughs> we can sort of capture yeah. that feeling a little bit. That feeling um, yeah. So with, especially with musicians you kind of have to to guide them just a little bit so that right. they don't fall into that sort of stereotypical yeah. cliche shot. Right. Um, or brick walls is another thing. A lot of brick musicians wall, love yeah. to be lined up against brick walls. So I yeah, try to avoid gritty, the brick wall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So, but other than that, it's, it's more of just sort of an, a feeling or I'll, you know, I spend time listening to their music and I try to get this certain oh, feeling out of it. Oh, okay. That's um, interesting. And sort of patch them in. Um, yeah. Yeah. And a, but a lot of times it's, it's a, it's sort of a, it's a, well, first of all, it's an organic process. Yeah. Um, so it's a lot of give and take. And my shoots, when, when somebody books with me, I try to leave enough time that we can sort of bounce ideas off of each other. Yeah. And things aren't going to happen instantly. It, right, it takes right. time to sort of work things out and then fall into this sort of zone of shooting and get right. the right stuff. Okay. Um, and it's, so yeah. And then the other thing too that I've noticed when I work with musicians, which I always find interesting, um, is the identity that they place on their instruments themselves. Okay. Um, it takes a lot to try to coax them away from having a shot without their instrument because oh, that's really? sort of their security blanket. Oh, right. Um, so that, that's okay. more of, it's just interesting to watch. Yeah. Um, you know, you say something, you shoot you somebody with a guitar. Yeah, yeah. Slowly. It's like, well, why don't we put it's the guitar okay. over here? Yeah. And they're like, well, I, but this is, you know, this, this is, is, it's like, no, 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 the music yeah. is here. It's not yeah. in this right. tool. Um, so I always thought that's, that's kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Yeah. Now, what about yeah. these here? These look. Um, this, these are, I also do. Um, uh, high school yearbook photography. Oh, is this what this um, is? Okay. Yeah, I don't really advertise yeah. it, um, but it's all been sort of word of mouth, and so this is just sort of an example of some of the high school stuff that I do. And they really like it because I sort of treat it like I treat a musician suit. So we get outside and we've got okay. lights all around them, and they get that sort of pampered feeling, um, and they really like that. <laughs> now, what would these be used for? I mean, is it just that they're graduating and they want sort of a portfolio type yeah not to go to work but just as like a, just a keepsake yeah type thing. um a lot of times either they aren't happy with maybe the the photographers that the schools might use oh so they would actually um, use this in the in so the they yep yeah schools oh, are okay it gets kind of gray area with schools sometimes certain schools say you can only use certain photographers that they use i see um, other schools say you know if you're not happy with who we use then you can go outside but you have to meet these certain requirements huh. by deadline i didn't know you stuff. could do that that's yeah. interesting yeah so that's kind of nice so yeah. um so every once in a while i'll get contacted by somebody um and the, the kids especially the, the parents want the sort of traditional smiley kind of shot right um, but a lot of times the kids want a little bit something you know they're getting into that age where they're they're starting to come into themselves more you um feeling, and they might want it to yeah. be a little more serious and a little more dramatic right um so they like in particular, they like my work because I can sort of treat them. I treat them like musicians or movie stars, you know, and so they can get a little bit more That's nice, yeah. serious and, and a little more emotive um, in some of the stuff. Yeah. With that, the more you use digital, the, the more you want to go back to in it. A, well, in a commercial stance or in a commercial aspect for photography, I think digital is fantastic. Yeah. Um, and what happens, though, is, you know, the clients don't want to wait 
two weeks now for turnaround. They, they need their images right away. They need right. them before they even leave the session. Okay. I approach shoots with a film mentality, so I have a tendency to slow down a little bit. Okay. Um, whereas digital, because everything is so instant and you have the back of the screen that you can look at a lot of times now, and every once in a while I'll do it too. You just, you just shoot and 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 shoot. Right. You fill up the memory card and then you can go back and- And then you just look at to see. Edit it down, yeah. So um, you're not really thinking about the process. You're just sort of automated. Yeah. You're just kind of doing it on an automated process. Huh. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that, um, but I just, I've always been trained to shoot like I was shooting with film. So when right. I go into sh sessions, usually after 10 or 12 or 14 shots, usually I sort of, I can feel my stuff instinct instinctively kind of hang back for a few minutes as if I was trying to change film or, or something out of the camera. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of a hard habit to break, but I kind of like it because it, it still helps me to slow down and it helps me to think through my shots and not just let right. the camera sort of take over and automatically do everything mm. for me. Um, now, uh, are you self-taught or did you go to school? I went to, um, I went to a four-year fine arts college to sort of spend four years working on the craft of it. Okay. Um, I've always, I've always taken pictures. I have, I mean, between pictures and video, um, I have a, like I have a little picture I posted on Facebook a little while ago of me as a little kid, and it was um, the first time my dad had showed me a Polaroid camera. Oh right. And so it's a picture of me holding these Polaroids, and I have this big smile on my yeah. face. And I've always just been drawn to a still image, huh. um, and I don't know, I don't know why. It's just. Do you have a favorite photographer or um, anyone that inspires you? Or? Uh, so there's, I mean, there's a lot of, um, drawing a blank right now. <laughs> um, there's a lot of contemporary photographers that I like. Um, there's a guy, there's a gentleman by the name of Dave McKean, who's, he's not exactly a traditional photographer in the sense of just shooting images, but he likes to incorporate photographs into his work. Um, so he's kind of a mixed media guy, hmm. um, and I like his stuff. Um, his stuff um, I like celebrity photography. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, like Mark Seliger, he does a lot of stuff for Rolling Stone. He works with musicians a lot, um, and I, I like, I like, I like photographers that control the entire environment. Okay. Um, what so, about someone like Cindy Sherman? Do you like? Do you? Like I do. I like. Or? I like. Um, Which is a more art. Slant yeah, she's sort of a more, more fine it. art slant. Yeah. And I, I have a tendency to think a lot of the stuff that I do with bands and headshots, um, I sort of bring a fine art eye into it, especially the stuff yeah. we do outside with bands and with high school stuff. Okay. Um, there's just a certain color palette that I'm looking for, and I, I think it's more of a painterly color palette than a more traditional film color thing. Okay. Um, and so, and I don't know how to explain that other than there's just, when I see my work, and I look back and sort of see how it's evolved. There's just, there's, I can see the history of my fine art education huh. in the images. And it's right. not really something I can say, well, this, you know, right here is part of the fine art education that I'm applying right. to it. But there's just an overall. Well, certainly the photographs with the anime yeah. dolls, that has a much more fine art. Yeah, yeah. And I wanted those to in it. particular to yeah. sort of feel more film like. Okay. Um, even though we shot them digitally. Um, I want them to have They look more like of movie that stills. Film. Yeah? yeah? Yeah. They really do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, yeah. Sid, thank you very much. Absolutely. Very interesting. No problem at all. Yeah. Thank you. Wonderful work. Thank you. Hi. My name is Helene Lavasser, and I paint in oil. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Now, what's your name? My name is Helene Lavasser. And you're an artist here at the Picker Building? Yes, I'm one of many. There are four next to me, three in this studio, and uh, we all paint here every day. So you're here every day? I'm here every day, Monday through Friday. Uh, Very good. Sometimes on weekends if I have something really good going on that I can't leave, leave without. Uh, we've been here quite a while. Uh, I've been here probably five years. Uh, others came in after that. Um, and uh, we love the Picker Building because, it, well, firstly, it's nearby for me. I, don't, I only live in Nashua, about 10 minutes from here. So it's really good to be able to come here. If I forget something, I go home, get it, come back. And, uh, and the atmosphere is very conducive to painting. Now, what, to why I, is that? Why is the atmosphere conducive it's a to mill. painting? You know, it has, it has, look at these great ceilings and the space. It just clears your head. You, you can play music nice and loud or not, and it, it feels good. 
what I did was, when I first got here, was I was so fascinated with the mill that that's what I painted. I painted the windows, I painted the mills, I painted the, the, the roofs, uh, I, all those great shapes. They like big still lifes to me because I'm a fairly still life painter. Now, when you say still life, what, what, what are you talking about? What is a still life? A still life, one that doesn't move. Uh, like here is typically my work area here, and I love painting from life. So my grandchild loves to drink Coca-Cola from a, a bottle, not a can, bottle. So she said, here, my, 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 give paint this. So I did. And, oh, look uh, at that. Yeah. Voila. And so um, when I paint my breakfast, before I, it, not, you know, I eat all my props. <laughs> uh, and uh, sometimes I refer, that was fresh paint, by the way. Uh, sometimes I refer to photos when, on other things, such as this great rooster one that is over there. This is the photo that I used for that. But for the most part, I prefer, I, pa I paint fruits and vegetables, which is what you're going to see all along that wall over there. Now, when you, when you paint, a bottle or some eggs or onions. Are, are you trying to say something with the finished product or what is, what is your ultimate goal with one of your still lives? Uh, the source of light. Without the light, there's, light. No li there's no life without light. So it's because if you take a look at this bottle and if I shut off the light, blah. But if you create a source of light, so I don't really paint a bottle. I paint what the light does to the bottle. So you're painting more how the light reflects the off shapes. the object or yep. what it says about yep. the object. And those terrific negative spaces, such as the shadow that goes th down there like that. And, and the, just the art of seeing. Uh, this bottle is green. You, you might not have noticed that, but if you sit and stare mm. at it, you'll see that there's reflection of green right down there. Right there, uh, and the top part is green. And it's just exciting to me to be able to see all that. You get started, and suddenly you're right braining. And then you just paint, paint. Uh, but if you think of it as a bottle, you might get something a little static. You just think of it as shapes, a shape shapes. that goes a shape. And, uh, and it, it takes on life that way. When you start a piece, you're looking at the shape you're looking at how the light reflects off of the object. Now these paintings, these are, these are onions? <laughs> uh, no, they're red top turnips. They're turnips. Yeah. The, so, the process starts right there in the grocery store. I go into the produce department, and if something strikes my eye and looks so good, I grab it. My, my, my children used to open the refrigerator and say, uh, can we eat this or are you going to paint it? Because, <laughs> and, and even, even today when they buy something, they, they hold it for me. They say, oh, would you like to paint this one? Like here, I, I saw these guys here and they look more Larry and Curly. And um, this is chiaroscuro. Do you, know, you probably don't know what chiaroscuro is, but it's light passing through. When you, you want to create something that looks like the light is passing through the shape, you put it dark on this side because it, that's what your eye tells you. Uh, it, so when, when you started this painting in particular, yes. what was the first step? Did you, Buy the did you draw? Did you draw no, on the canvas? I don't. Or? No. I take my brush with a wet burnt sienna and I, and I sketch it in quickly. With, with what? Burnt sienna. Burnt sienna? Yeah, a liquid. And liquid, you sketch it in with, uh, the, with the paint? So that I can get the shape, the, the places, and places, get the positioning. In, in place, and then I back off and see if that's a good composition. Uh, and then from there, um, I will build up the shadows. The shadows, if you, can get, if you can get a good underpainting without color, just where the shadows are and where the light is going to be, let the canvas be the light, and get the shadows in there, back off, take a look, constantly backing off and looking at it at a distance so that you know what you're looking at. And ditto with this one here. Uh, doing a singular one, the shadow right there, and that's what creates it round to get it to go round. You keep your edges really soft if you want a round thing. If you put real hard edges, you're going to have a flat looking um, item. Now when you said let the canvas be the light, what did you mean by that? Meaning I put the shadows in and I let the canvas be the light. 
So you like to have a show through. Show through on the light side. So instead of applying a lighter paint. Don't have to do that. You can use your canvas to do that. Uh, there are many who use underpaintings, which is very, very nice too, to do a colored underpainting or something like that. And from time to time, I will. I'll tint the canvas something pleasant, you know, uh, a good yellow. Uh, or something that was, if you're doing green, you might like to have it on the red side because that's the complementary of green and red. Uh, uh, but sometimes I paint directly uh, to a white canvas. It doesn't, it doesn't scare me. Uh, and after I'm comfortable with where everything is placed on a, a canvas, then I can start to build up the color. But it's a, a lot easier to make corrections without a lot of color mixing up because then your brain is seeing color and you're not seeing the shape. What kind of paint do you use? Oil paint. You use oil paint? Yes. Now do you make it transparent? Do you layer it? Is it uh, opaque? I'm more, I'm more a la prima. I like to put it on and leave it there. Uh, what, what is a la prima? You put thick paint right now and that's your paint. I paint rapidly because fruit dies. And so it behooves you to paint rather rapidly. So uh, especially if you're going to paint flowers too, that's not going to last. So you better paint right now. So I, uh, my method has been to just get it on. And so I, I paint thickly. Now, how long have you been painting? All my life. I come from a family of painters. I thought everybody did. Oh. Uh, uh, I, have, I come from a family of nine. And we all painted something. And I've never wanted to do anything else but be a painter. This is your work It here. is. And all of these paintings have a story. They're not just paintings. These They're are wonderful. Stories. My goodness. Uh, these little guys here, I've got to tell you this. These pairs, are, uh, Chinese pairs. Chinese pairs. We have a, a store up the street called Saigon Market right up there. And I went in there and saw these different pairs. See how the, the, the stems are not like regular pairs? Oh, they're, they're more pointed. They're little pointy like. things. Yeah. And I thought, how cute is that? So I couldn't help myself. There it was. I had to do that. And uh, we were walking downtown and this boy right here, typical modern thing, right? You have to take out your, your iPad or something, uh, do one of these things. Right. And, and he was sitting on his skateboard with his backpack. And I said, hey, how precious is that? That <laughs> was from a photo. But, and so I kind of snuck it like this, you know, click, so that uh, uh, he didn't really know that I was doing that. But uh, I thought, yeah, with the way people are dressing, I wanted to make a statement of the modern times. Now you all know Sid Caesar, that's his motorcycle, that's his, uh, his scooter over there. Huh. Uh, he, in the summertime he brings that here and, uh, and it's a, that's the corner of the front door as you came in. Oh, I see. Now Helene, tell me about the painting of apples here. How, <laughs> how, long, how long did that take you to do? Well, it was a demo. Uh, I was doing a demonstration for uh, an art group and I had a half, an hour and a half to do it. You did that painting in an, an hour, hour and, and a half? half. Yeah. And sometimes when I'm giving a lecture, uh, I'm also teaching myself as I'm talking so that I, fall, I, I obey what I'm, I'm saying to myself. I see. Um, yeah. So that's, what, that's what that one, how that one turned out. And I'm, I'm actually surprised at it myself. Now, do you do, you do anything to protect the paint after it's dried? Always or? varnished, yeah. You varnish it? Mm -hmm. Now, how many layers of varnish? Not too many. One usually is sufficient. Um, uh, you wait for it to dry really thoroughly. How long would it take for one of these paintings to dry? Uh, it's a week. A week. Because uh, you want it to dry thoroughly. The, the reason for that, well, I use retouch varnish, which is okay, because uh, if you do a finished varnish, that, that puts a layer on top, but the retouch varnish sinks into the paint, and so it becomes part of it. Uh, uh, but if you want to do something archival, which you need to have it removed in time, I don't think it will matter. But uh, you do need to use a different type, and it has to dry a longer time for that. Now, what, what is retouch varnish? That's as you're painting or yes. that's something that, okay, uh, what, what does that do? It, it gives you the sheen. If you've had any areas in your paint that have dulled down, that have dulled. it'll perk it up and so that you know that you have something more even. Uh, I see. Because there are certain colors that uh, will tend to do that, will tend to sink into and be quiet, you know, it'll dull. 
but you put a little retouch varnish on it and you're back to uh, step one. Well, Helene, thank you very much. Your well, work is wonderful. Thank you. If you'd like to be featured in Artist Spotlight, go to artistspotlight.org.